And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Boros Aggro, where we have my shy puppy dog. Her name's Puppy. And she's going to be joining us for a little bit here while we play some Boros Aggro, a deck that I really like to play. I really like playing Experimental Frenzy because you get to do some really crazy stuff with Experimental Frenzy. And we got a couple of new cards that I really like, Phoenix of Ash and Tectonic Giant. I think both of these cards are quite strong. And it's going to be a Hushbringer deck for us. You know, uh, there's not as much Enter the Battlefield creatures as there was um, a couple of weeks ago, but there's still a lot of uh, ETB uh, creatures running around where hopefully Hushbringer helps slow them down. Um, and then, yeah, like so this is like an, an, an aggressive deck that's kind of plays more of like a mid-range, uh, really, and you can play a real... A long game with Experimental Frenzy, um, but it's a fun one to play. And so let's go ahead and get to some games. We're going to play it in Ranked and see how we do. Traditional Standard Ranked with some Boros Acro. Puppy. We aren't playing any Embercleave in here. Um... Kind of play more of a, a mid-range deck. Embercleave's like not like the best card to have on top with Frenzy, but I don't know. Maybe maybe we should just be having like one Embercleave in here over something. Um, Underworld Sentiment Golgari Reanimator deck. What does Underworld Sentiment do? that card do again? Um, as a little reminder, uh, take, taking off this the records here, where you can still see the record. Um, you know, if you're watching, so it's for people on YouTube, so you're not getting you're not getting spoiled the spoiled version of the previous decks. The last deck of the day, I will be putting the all like which is gonna be this deck. This is the last deck of the day. I'll be putting the records from all the previous decks down in the description if you want to know what they were. Yeah, we used to have Aurelia in the deck, and I took out Aurelia for Tectonic Giant. I just liked, I was more impressed with Tectonic Giant or Long Haul than Aurelia, but Aurelia makes Hushbringer a lot better. Give it, you know, like for Hushbringer, you want to pump, you really want to pump the hush, the power of Hushbringer to make it a better card than just a 1 2. Could have played Frenzy there, but I didn't want Frenzy to get countered. I was thinking that maybe they'd play like a something at end step that would be able to um, you know, like Justice Strike or Bone Crusher Giant. I like to draw on that land. That was good. <laughs> Whoa, counter the Hushbringer? Oh, no, look at cards. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, just had a lot of had a lot of feedback of people not, not liking the scores up there. The YouTube viewers that wanted to see... They wanted to see, you know, didn't want to watch the decks in order, but, you know, didn't want to get spoiled by the, the record of them before they watched them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I like to learn. Yeah, I always liked doing Frenzy with 
Um, I like playing Frenzy with um, Wayward Swordtooth before. And now, yeah, I hadn't really thought about Frenzy with Dryad, with the new Dryad that lets us play multiple lands off the, t you know, like, that plays multiple lands a turn. Frenzy with Dryad could be pretty sweet. Awesome, cool. Glad y'all are loving the Cardboard Live. Uh, that's bad auto tap. Why? Why would it auto tap like that? Oh well, we had frenzy on top. Wonder why it auto tapped. <laughs> Didn't even leave up like one red and one white. Okay, so is it Flash? May not actually change anything. Hushbringer doesn't really usually do a lot. Like, it's not a great card, but, you know, it, it attacks. Gets to do some damage. I don't really love Merry Mint and Glass Casket against the, the Brazen Borrower deck. So, sure. Let's just run it back. Yeah, no, Hactos and Hushbringer are not a combo. It gets... Hactos gets protection from nothing with Hushbringer in play. Such a shy puppy. It's kind of crazy. She's not normally this shy. Like if if she's not on camera, she's just really camera shy. Normally she does nothing but run around. So the reason why I waited a turn for the Bone Crusher Stomp like that, because I wanted to test to see if they would counter that, and if so, if they would counter it, then I would be able to resolve Tectonic Giant. I really don't want Tectonic Giant countered. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Do, 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 do. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Uh, 
Well, that didn't go very well for us, puppy. They took a lot of damage, though. Playing the land first to play around Mystical Disputes. Yay, Tectonic Giant not countered. That's good. Giant goes infinite. Going infinite. Tonic Giant's so sweet, puppy. Don't quite have the mana. Didn't quite have the mana to use Castle Arnvale also. Um, yeah, I just didn't have the white mana. I needed one more white mana for the, to activate Castle Arnvale also, which, even though I, I would have liked to do that. Yeah, this tectonic giant tectonic giant's just been completely insane for us this this game. I think they got it though. Gosh. That was not that was not a good frenzy. Not a good frenzy. Alright, maybe I do need these glass caskets. So I got two Eidolons and a Hushbringer. I don't know. I got Justice Strike also. I guess I could play like Clarion. I get rid of those those creatures. 
Triple Frenzy. Yeah, I know Glass Casket's not great against Brazen Borrower, but it still resets... At the very least, it resets um, the Flash creature. But, like, Gadwick is just so hard to ever attack through that we kind of need it. I guess, I guess, yeah, we want Mountain. Ugh. Puppy. It's just impossible to attack through Gadwick. We just need more things to kill Gadwick. Since I have a backup to Zeek, I'm basically letting this one get killed because we have the backup that we can pump with integrity. Missing land drops. Yeah, I have two dogs. I have Puppy and Harvey. And this is Puppy. Harvey is an Australian Shepherd. Um. So she's bigger, not really a lap dog for stream purposes. This hand's awesome. I don't like putting that uh, giant killer down to the bottom. <laughs> we had a great Dane, but no matter, no matter how many times we told her, she was convinced that she was a lap dog. Kill the Scorch Bitter that's attacking for two. If you want the, if you want the playlist, it's exclamation point playlist. This specific song is Tiny Dancer by Elton John. Yeah, Mono Red's always the most popular in the, in the beginning of formats. It is very popular right now. Yeah, Justice Strike does not kill Torbran. <clears throat> so I could preemptive. I 
Brienta of Integrity the Tajik to make it a 5-4, and then it would be able to mentor onto like one of these things to make them even bigger. Attack. Attacking's fun. One point from killing them. I guess if I would have integrity, it would have been lethal, but. I'm not expecting to take lethal on the way back. And therefore, then just killing them now. GG. It's like Tectonic Giant just does three damage when it attacks. They're at three, and then obviously I had the Integrity Intervention, which would do three damage also. All right, so a Decree, some Glass Caskets, some Banishing Lights, some Clarions, um, maybe even one Intervention. Bringing in a lot of stuff. Basically, we're going to turn into Boros Control, so we're going to cut... Tajik cut Eidolon. Hmm. If we cut Phoenix and a couple Eidolons and just be Boros Control. What are you, what are you doing, Giant Killer? You, you're killing, what, Annex? And that's it? You can get rid of these Giant Killers. Play a couple Phoenix. What does Hushbringer really do? Hushbringer doesn't actually do stuff, does it? I mean, it's a lifelinker. Yeah, Merriment goes comes in against decks with sweepers like control decks with sweepers we get a Tajik in here also to be able to over one of the Hushbringers to be able to Mentor a Hushbringer. Yeah, I guess I guess Hushbringer stops Annex die trigger. That's true. Yeah, I'm expecting to play a long game. Um and Wanting Frenzy for me to take over and win the long game. That's like my, my plan is be control deck with Frenzy. And sometimes they take my Frenzy. Yeah, I'm not sure the Yeah, I'm not sure the specific Abzan list that you're talking about there. Gaming. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously I have the temple, but I already know I like my top card, so I'm going to keep the temple to be able to do that the next turn. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you definitely post links of decklist in chat. Of course. Go, giant, go. That's a lot of lands over there for them. Giant should just close this close this out. Cool. Get a land drop. We don't really need to play Frenzy yet. Alright, alright. You wanna go back to the living room? Go have fun with Harvey. Okay, I'm back. Hey, you, Jack. Phoenix. Tiktok Giant's just been pretty sweet. Yeah, they just had way too many lands. And that was not too close. All right, 2-0 for Boros Agro. Samuel. Good job with all these awesome decks. Thank you so much there, Samuel. Uh, that's unfortunate. Y'all know that I love that card, but I don't have another red source. So. Well, there's the other red source. I guess I had it the whole time. Ah, undo. There we go. There we go, seven number eight. Tajik versus Shock is not a winning proposition for me. But I guess I'm playing it. I got a backup Tajik.
<laughs> the ultimate Embercleave meme existence there. Equipping an Embercleave with another Embercleave through shenanigans with Spark Double and Animating Fairy. Okay. That's that's some shenanigans. We've done um, a Gruel deck with the Great Henge and animating the Great Henge with Karn and then Ember cleaving the Great Henge. That was some good quality shenanigans. So I attack for six if I just attack in. Puts them down to 11. It's not really a race I'm winning. Yeah, the Zorius Library deck, we're playing it on Thursday. The Zorius Mirror deck. Um, the person went to bed and said one wanted the deck moved to Thursday. And so... Moving that to Thursday. Do, 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 looking out my back door. I don't like not attacking. Maybe I should attack with just a Zeke last turn. Of course, have to shock the Tajik because the Tajik prevents the damage to the Phoenix. And even though I had the gods willing to protect the Tajik, but I'm letting that happen because we have the backup Tajik. I'll protect the Phoenix. Hopefully I'm not dead here. We're at the point now like where we are winning a race. You know, like if we're not dead, this Phoenix of Ash is gonna be a huge problem for them to try to deal with. They have to like kill the Tajik and then kill the Phoenix. And we've already seen them play multiple shocks. They don't really seem to have another shock in hand because they probably would have played it the turn before to kill the Phoenix. Yeah, mentoring onto the Phoenix is pretty nice with the Tajik. I'm a little surprised they just took it all and didn't just even do it like a chump block. Um, trying to block Tajik is kind of tough because of the first strike ability. All right, so does that kill me with the 10th Street Dodger? So if they have if they have Ember Cleave on the Steamkin, that's 10. 
11, 12, 13, 14. That would put me down to three. So then they would need... They would still need... Obviously, they'd still have the three mana with Steamkin for second main. And they need three damage. That's... Yeah, I did not have that. All right. So, sideboard. Let's turn into a control deck again. Taking out Giant Killer, a couple Eidolons, a couple Phoenix, a couple Tajik, and a Hushbringer. Let's go. And <laughs> the glorious bonsai charge to signal defeat. Was starting to think the opponent didn't have the aggro spirit. <laughs> bonsai. Clarion's good. So we got Clarion on three, Frenzy on four. And then hope our frenzies are good. That looks like that's the plan. So I need to play Arden Veil next. Plan changed. Got to justice strike this annex first. Charisma MTG. Getting that resub in here. Thanks so much there, Charisma. So number nine today. We did. Yay, not dead yet. Not dead yet. We'll have Helios Intervention destroy the Ember Cleave. I could gain a lot of life with the next turn. Darn. Maybe I should have gained a lot of life. I don't know. They, their deck doesn't have... So the thing about Mono Red these days, it doesn't have a lot of... This intervention seems kind of good, though. Maybe I should need, need to play more of these. It doesn't have a lot of direct damage, to be honest. And even though I could gain some life, just basically any creature attached to the Ember Cleave is going to be a huge problem to deal with over and over.
protected from white. What is this shenanigans? Unchained Berserker. Sathros turned his restraints to revenge. And that thing attacks for three. Shenanigans. Two of them. Clarion does not kill them. Clarion does count as a white source dealing damage. What's up, Zerf? Going good? Have everything, we get it. Bone Crusher, no Bone Crusher, protection from white, unchained berserker. Dang. Yeah, they got me. All my removal is white. That I had in hand. Didn't have any Bone Crusher Giants. And then, of course, the Ember Cleave, so that my 3 4 can't even block them. Yeah, it's just a perfect combo. GG's. Where were you last game? Need you stomping. <laughs> oh, hey, exiled. Yeah, GG's. Temple of Mystery. I hope this is a Risen Reef deck that's going to be shut down by Hushbringer. That's the hope. Is the hope. Fantris Gargoyle. So it seems like a Kiora deck. Kiora decks usually have like Cavaliers and stuff like that. Kiora decks also have Uro. And so maybe I need to save the Justice Strike for Uro. But... We're good at magic, so we drew Giant Killer. Should be filling up their own graveyard to be able to recast the Uro. Yeah. Edgewall Innkeeper. No. This.
<laughs> yeah, that was a good flavor there. The giant killer chopping down the elder giant. I do wish Croxa had a, a cool animation too. Thank you, Flax. Thanks for the the sub there. Um, thoughts on who will win the MTG Championship this year? On I honestly don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Could be. Could be anybody. Um. So it hits a, a sub goal. For us. Hmm. Looking for a land. Cool. We'll just take this one. Get Jace out of there. Hey, Dr. K. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible that just the whole Hushbringer thing is not worth it and you know with with Uro in the format and that you know that we should move away from it. Hushbringer's good against uh the Great Henge. So that's pretty sweet. Maybe I should have played Eidolon in a second Hushbringer instead of the Bone Crusher. Yeah. Should have played Eidolon in a second Bone Crusher. Or se Eidolon in a second Hushbringer. Ouch. Just had that feeling that turn that I need to play that second Hushbringer. Draw three cards. No, I haven't tried any Hushbringer with Croxa and Clackbridge Troll. I haven't tried that. Innkeeper is a cast trigger. Just can't get, can't really get through these large creatures. I need more large creature removal. Out of sideboard. Yeah, the gargoyles are going to kill me. It's okay, they can't block. 
Definitely sideboarding out these Eidolon of Obstructions. I mean, this game's just over. Don't need to waste more time. So Glass Casket is three or less. Gets rid of Uro and that 5-4. All those things are artifacts, right? So, so I want that. I want Banishing Lights. That could destroy some stuff. And I kind of want Outlaw's Merriment. They're just going to like sit back. Like Maybe we just get a bunch of creatures with Outlaw Merriment. Maybe that's the route we need to go. Don't need integrity. It's not like a damage based matchup. Um, and then, uh, yeah, play Merriment instead of Tectonic Giant with 3 4 just being smaller than what they're doing. Let's try this. Oh, well, we need lands. Fun game of magic right here. Thought we had a decent sideboard plan. Obviously doesn't matter if we don't have any spells to play. Basically getting rid of the ground creatures because they just have the three mana five five. I don't get to really get through. I guess I could glass cask at that, but I kind of wanted to try the air, even though I didn't have the double red yet. Had it the whole time. You can tell I was fairly confident in getting it. No lands. There's a land. This looks like an Emery deck. With a golden egg. All right, time to get Merriment out. I'm hopefully doing some good work for us. Is 
They have the four cards in hand. They do get to block with the Gargoyle. Time walk. Rough. I need to draw Heliod's Intervention. I, I guess I need to just Glass Casket to protect against the Great Hinge. Come on, Triple Innkeeper? After I mold a five, you get Triple Innkeeper? Ugh. Oh. Should play that draw four. We're out here. Even if I would have glass casted the 5 4, they would have just bounced the glass casket, got the 5 4 back, still had that same turn. So. All right, one last game. Try to make it to three and two. I'm playing someone from Mythic right now. I'm in, you know, because the rankings reset a few days ago. So I'm still in platinum right now, but not even diamond. That's a pretty big jump. Just means there's you know not a lot of players that have ranked up to, to Mythic yet. This early in the month. There we go. Yeah, I mean, not today. Not today. Merriment hasn't been good, but Merriment's definitely been it good. Um, like I said, it's it's a good change of pace against control. Might have been in over. Sideboard there against the bar where I guess I don't know. I wasn't beating triple in keeper on a mold of five. This wasn't happening. I'll just take it. Obviously, I could have Justice Strike to the Steamkin. But I'll take it, be able to have Justice Strike for another threat.
<clears throat> Attack time. And Tajik prevents, yeah, keeps the Phoenix alive. Phoenix is going to be able to pump up. All right, so we're going to play all this stuff and take out this, those, a couple of these, a couple of these, a couple of those, that, and we'll play three frenzy. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, I could see playing Elspeth for the anti-control instead of Merriment. I could see that. Um, the thing, like one thing that makes Elspeth really strong is that you get you can keep playing it from the graveyard. But we do have the phoenixes that keep coming back. So like we we already are kind of using our graveyard with the we already have like the four escape cards of the four phoenixes. So that's something to consider. It does seem like a lot of the control decks are playing a lot of bounce, and that is something that <clears throat> that's not good for for merriment. You know, whether it's Teferi, Brazen Borrower, that is kind of rough for for merriment. The uh, bounce in the format. No, Frenzy, Frenzy is very good in the deck. Um, we haven't really played that kind of game yet. But no, I definitely like Frenzy. Of course, just want to draw land. Want to use two removal spells. Been wanting to double spell. Unlikely that we win this from here. Nope, that's lethal. Just couldn't double spell enough. I mean, I guess, yeah, just couldn't double spell. All right. I like my mono red matchup, but, you know, got player spells. Putting the fetch land back so I don't shuffle because now my scry, now I have two lands down at the bottom, and of course I don't want those lands, so I don't want to even shuffle. If I, you know, three man would kind of be a little bit better where I could protect the Eidolon from a shock.
Come on, I want two spells. Spell, spell. Good. They get to play one of those next turn, but not both of them. Oh no, they had another one one mana spell with Steamkin, never mind. Uh, and then does the double land. Uh, that went horribly for me. Another light up the stage. Yeah, that went horribly. Light of the Sage card's pretty good. So is that Runaway Steamkin card. No, I don't think Shadow Spear has any use in the deck. So disappointing run, a 2-3 for the Boris Aggro deck. Our 1 and 2 mana cards just aren't very good. As we saw it. Um, a pro white card was kind of a problem. I only have two two Clarions. Uh, three. I guess I just have the two Clarions. Um, where I have this deck right now, I think it does need to adapt. I think I either need to go... Like, the side line of Obstruction has not been strong enough. Either need to go much more aggressive and basically make it mono-red splashing some white basically replace giant killers god willing idol on hushbringer with all red cards which at that point is just like why am I, why are we splashing white for like justice strike to Zeke basically in sideboard um and you know play for urban champion steamkin stuff like that and ember cleave but obviously honestly just you know you should just be playing mono red at that point or Making this more of a just a Boros mid range and get rid of Tajik, Eidolon, Hushbringer. Still, basically, we probably need to get rid of Eidolon, Hushbringer and just play a lot more removal and try to be like a, a more mid range with like removal and frenzy to, to play a long game. I think we probably have to go one of those options. The Hushbringers just aren't strong enough. Um, Yeah, probably just need to pick some kind of lane there. Um, not exactly sure. I'm disappointed that we lost there twice to Mono Red because, especially after Cyborg, like on on paper, I like what we have going on, and we saw like the first match. You know, we played three times against Mono Red. The first match, we won very easily both games and I, I really liked what we had going on and then you know we just kind of you know end up mulliganing and having just awkward cards and hands and stuff and you know it was just kind of just had like just some awkward draws those other games and ended up losing those and that was disappointing those those losses to mono red but we need a, some higher impact cards um storm's wrath is absolutely an option yeah absolutely uh i i want like clarion it's it's cheaper and then the thing i like about clarion is that if you're not behind like if you're not behind you get to just give your creatures lifelink 
but yeah, um, you, seeing that pro white creature, you know, like we had the pro, we had Deafening Clarion and they had a couple of the pro white creatures. Yeah, Storm's, Storm's Wrath is, is good. Like, yeah, going towards Storm's Wrath, maybe that, that's definitely something that, that I should uh, consider. Absolutely. And maybe more more Decree and less Glass Casket. We have The reason why to play Glass Casket is because of, like, Edgewall Innkeeper decks and stuff like that. But now that... I mean, honestly, I don't have, like, a ton of things for Torbran because Justice Strike doesn't kill Torbran. And, of course, now, that, you know, uh, I don't know, all the actual Incubator decks are, these days, are they're not, like, uh, green-black. They're blue. Like, these days, I think that Devout Decree is, is probably just where we want to be. So I think that we should just be playing a lot more Devout Decrees, basically. I think there's... It's tough making, like, a, a good playable Boros deck, honestly, but... I think there's the tools. I think I need to kind of clean it up around the edges and and uh, switch some stuff up now with this this new meta game. Now that I really know like exactly what the model red deck that everybody plays, and then of course like blue white control, like that's that's really like what whenever you're building decks right now, you got to have good mono red and blue white control matchups. And most all of this shell was was built um, for the last metagame and then also just you know week one standard before we really know what we're playing against but now that we really know what we're playing against and uh everything it looks like i need to kind of go back through some cards and and uh re-update this the next time we play it but there's a lot of good stuff here like we saw tectonic giant completely dominate games i really like tectonic giant i really like phoenix of ash i just want to find i want to find some some more ways to play Tectonic Giant and Phoenix of Ash, especially Tectonic Giant in Standard. Um, why Justice Strike over Lava Coil? Because Justice Strike kills everything. You know, like if you think about like, uh, you know, Fire Zone Invention decks, like Justice Strike just kills everything. Kills like your 6 6 Uro or, or your, um, your Kenrith, your Cavalier of Flame. Just kills everything except for Torbran. But you know, it's instant speed uh for questing beast. But yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh I have not I have not experimented with Frenzy and Dryad a gruel deck. That's definitely something that I need to uh experience. Yeah, we talked about that one earlier. I need to need to do new dryad uh play in multiple lands a turn with frenzy and, and going crazy with that that does sound fun need to need to build that kind of deck all right but there's boros aggro if y'all are watching on youtube if you got some good uh tectonic shells with like tectonic giant uh or you know good uh boros ideas let me know um but like i said maybe the thing to do with this is kind of turn it into red with like ember cleave fervent champions team can i don't know there's different ways to go all right, that's, that's Boros Aggro, though. Um, yeah, so hit that like button over there and uh, leave those comments. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.